Welcome back to the JH channel. So, really cool, fun episode we wanna do for you guys today. I get a lot of questions asked, especially owning a shop. What diesel truck should I buy? Should I buy a brand new one? Should I buy a used one? Should I buy something that, you know, somebody's basically just letting go and should I buy a mechanic special? How are the 6.0s compared to the Duramax? So what we're gonna do today, guys, we're gonna compare a $100,000 truck to a truck that I got about three grand into total. So I paid about two for it, give or take, and then I got another couple grand or a couple hundred bucks into some other stuff. So let's say two to three grand. So we have a 2024 GMC Denali, which you guys have seen on the channel. I introduced it on the channel. It's our new tow rig. And then we also have this truck, which I bought for a donor truck, so I could use the engine and put that in the 6.0 OG mud truck. So this truck's got quite a few miles on it, but for two grand, it's pretty much what you're gonna be looking at. We'll take a look at this thing, look at the truck, and then uh, you know, we'll pop the hood, compare them, and then we're gonna take them out and do some real world testing. We're gonna put a trailer behind them, we're gonna do that, we're gonna basically do some zero to 60 times or even some just quarter mile drag racing with them. We'll check it out and see what we can get these things to do. So first of all, as you notice, this truck is a two wheel drive compared to a four wheel drive. It is a two wheel drive F350 dually. So this truck is extended cab, long bed, got the dually bed on it. It's got a decent set of tires. It's dented, dinged up. I bet this thing was like a tire truck or a lawn care truck or something most of its life. So either way, you got this thing here, which we'll get into. You can check out the interior on it. A lot of people that are familiar with these Fords, this is a work edition truck. It's not a fully loaded version. In 2006, they did have King Ranches and stuff like that. But as far as like, you know, your interior wise, your screens, all that stuff, pretty, uh, pretty minuscule, not big screens if they even had any at all, which really I think in 2006, I don't think anybody did yet. They were still using just a regular old digital radio. This truck does have a trailer brake controller, which is a good option uh, for 2006. Um, I, I think a lot of the um, GMs didn't come with them until later on. Fords came out with them a little bit earlier than everybody. So you do have your trailer gain and everything on it. Um, and then uh, other than that, interior is pretty basic. Like I said, two grand versus 100 grand. These trucks are going for right about 110 or 102, 103 on the sticker. Um, fortunately, this is kind of my dream truck. I mean, literally, like I've been fortunate enough where running the business and doing everything, uh, I was able to you know, get on top of things and, you know, be able to afford a truck like that really because right now the diesel truck market or any automotive market is skyrocketed. So we'll get back to our challenge here, which is gonna be, like I said, $2,000 versus $100,000. Look at the bed. This truck did not come with a tailgate. It is missing a tailgate. It has some kind of fifth wheel plate in it, but we couldn't get the thing out. It was all jacked up, but we are gonna take our 30 foot Texas Pride trailer we're gonna load a truck up on it and we're gonna test it out behind this truck compared to that truck. So let's get straight to the testing. First, first things first, we're gonna take them out. We're gonna run them down the road and we're gonna see which one is faster. That truck is obviously a lot heavier. I bet that truck probably has about 2,000, 2,500 pounds on this truck. But when you take the horsepower, that truck factory 400 and was it 475 I think on that one. This one is 325, so you get about 150 horsepower difference, give or take, between the span of about 18 years. So we'll pop the hoods, you guys check out the power on them, the powerhouses, and then we'll take them down the road. All right guys, before we get too deep in today's video, don't forget until August 11th, every $5 spent on baldigo.com or jhdiesel4x4.com, click on the merch link, take you right over there. Every $5 spent on jhdiesel merchandise to get you a chance to win your choice of the Aerial Atom, or Leroy 2.0, which is a exoskeleton Corvette. Pretty sick, my boy Cleet's putting on. So don't forget every $5 spent. Currently, right now, we got our fresh unit in stock, ready to go. Our keeping the green shirt. Got the diesel pump on there. You guys, always support your diesel guys. Got the diesel pump, diesel logo on the front. JH Diesel. We got the hats. We got green snapbacks in stock. We got our turbo snapbacks in stock, along with our Ron Burgundy shirts, which one of my personal favorites because I love my Ron Burgundy. It ain't a diesel, but it gets the job done. And then our OG favorite, guys, I bet your boyfriend blocks diesel pump. Everything's in stock right now on the website, ready to rip. Giveaway ends August 11th. Check it out, guys. Thank you for your support. Enjoy the video today. All right, so first thing you might notice on the six liter, 
the hood is pretty nasty in here. It's got a lot of miles on it, a lot of wear on it, but I will give it credit, it is still running. So these trucks were pre-DPF trucks, pre-DEF trucks. They did have an EGR cooler on them and they also had a catalytic converter on them. This truck has been EGR deleted. Uh, somebody deleted that a long time ago because these EGR coolers are notorious for rupturing on these trucks, you guys probably know. So here's our powerhouse for the 6.0 diesel. This truck is bone stock, no tuner. Um, we had to rig it a little bit. We had to put the, um, we disconnect the AC because the compressor locked up. So I put a fresh air compressor on it, AC compressor, just so we could do this test with it. Because like I said, this thing's coming out and it is going to be uh, basically going into the mud truck. But you look at this and this is obviously a lot bigger hood, a lot bigger engine bay, and they have a lot more packed in on this engine bay. So here's our powerhouse here for our 6.6 .6 liter Duramax diesel. All emissions are on this truck. Everything is current, DPF, DEF. It's running um, uh, EGR system, everything you can imagine, muffler, it's all there. It's quiet, it does its job. But like I said, the main reason I kind of went to this and tried to get a new truck every couple years in my history, back in 2016, I had a daily driver. It was a 650, 700 horsepower truck, super fun, dually. Used to have a lot of fun with it. I broke down about five hours from home. And with a 40 foot trailer, with the mud truck on the back, with two side by sides on it. And I was like, damn, like I am five hours from home. We're trying to come home on a Sunday. The motor blew up. I had to get somebody to come and get me. And they had to literally grab another trailer tow another truck up there, drop that truck off me to tow my truck back with, and then load my truck on the trailer. It was a built motor, a super fun truck, but I swore to myself at that time, I said, I will never go through this again. So about six months later, I was able to do some stuff, do some wheeling dealing, got me a brand new GMC, and I've kind of just traded up every couple years since. The resale value is holding great on them, so that's where I'm at with it. So again, guys, that is one advantage where if you are towing like cross country or you're towing state to state and you're towing a big trailer, you break down somewhere and you have a truck that's out of warranty or you don't have any, uh, you know, you don't have any, um, sources where you're at, you could be stranded and it could cost you thousands and thousands of dollars to get the truck home and to get the truck fixed. So that is nice that a new truck does come with a warranty. That's a plus, but now let's get down to the testing and let's see what the ultimate truck is. I know it's kind of random. This truck is not identical, but it is the best that we could do and best we could come up with, but we're going to go check it out. This truck stock, this truck stock, see what happens. All right, we're on a closed road here. We are good to go. We're gonna see which one's faster. Oh, he's pulling up a little bit. All right, three, two, one, go. Oh. <laughs> I had no spool up on that at all. I just kind of matted it. He had her spooled up tight, man. Dang. All right. Come on, baby. Ah. Ah, I thought we had him. Got a little bit of wheel spin out of this thing. One, two. I think he jumped on us. I see how he is. Cheats the win. Ah, goodness. We almost had him too. I think it was a tie. I think I won some and he won some. That's what I'm calling it. Oh, I treat him on that one. Dude, see you later, dude. You're out of here. Shoo. Well, guys, that pretty much sums that up. All right, man, so we got our JH diesel shop truck loaded up on our 30-foot Texas Pride. This is gonna be a pretty average load. I think if I remember correctly, the trailer weighs 4,000 pounds. This truck's probably eight. So we're saying about 12,000 pounds on the trailer. 
So we're gonna do our comparison. First things first, we're gonna do a squat test. And just so you guys can see, go ahead and jack that thing up. We basically hooked it up just to move it and then we, we basically never see, put any load the on it. Up. Huh, it's start, yep. So the trailer is loose on the ball. I know we have our tape measure somewhere. Oh, there she is. I just said, I just said it. All right, so we're gonna do a squat test here. I wanna see how much this thing here drops. Let me get my tape measure set. All right, so balls up. We'll start dropping her down. I wanna get a good plant here. We're right about 34 and a half. So go ahead and let's drop her down. A little under 34 and a half right there. <laughs> That's her. Is that it? Yeah, That's it. Change are dragging on the ground now. We're good now. All right, guys. So it dropped it down to 30 and about three quarter from 34 and a half. So that's a uh, that's about, about four a four and a quarter, four, inches. A four and a quarter inch drop is what we got this thing dropped down to with our load on here, and this is that's an average of what a guy would put on that trailer. I would, I would say so. And but you look at the truck now. I mean, it's actually kind of doing its job because the truck is sitting just about perfectly level now. It might be a hair down in the rear, but we had about a four and a quarter drop. So now we'll hook this thing up to the Duramax and see what she drops when we hook that thing up. All right, we just unhooked the old 6.0, and we're about to hook up the GMC. So we just want to make sure that we are fair on that. And the truck is sitting where it needs to sit. Get my tape measure here. All right, guys, so to this line is 25 inches. Go ahead and drop her on down. Oh, so we're about two and a half <clears throat> inches a drop on this one. Over, I think the other one was four and a quarter. I think it was over four. So we're fully weighted now, two and a half inch drop. Not miserable. I can live with that. And we'll see what this rig does. Well, we had a little bit of a rain delay. It started monsooning on us yesterday afternoon when we hooked all this stuff up. So we had to give it a day. So we're gonna go out, take this thing out and do our true test right now. I didn't wanna be dealing with rain and everything else, but uh, we'll go test her out and see what we gotta do. I don't know if you see, if you buy the cheap truck, you also get a slip and slide or a pool in the back. Pool in the back. Pool. I say the bed's been worn in on this thing. Well, let's go hook her up and get the towing. So now I noticed our tow haul button's missing. I wonder if the button's actually still in there. And then, but now, this truck, you actually have a key still, which is not like the other one. There it is. It's so inconvenient having to push that key, isn't it? It's, <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> this one also doesn't have a door crank, <laughs> window crank. It's gonna be a little uh, warm on that side. Shouldn't be anything to worry about. Oh, does the trailer brakes it actually does. work? Well, it lights up, but it does not work. No. No. Hey, you can't have it all. No, you can't. Come on, old girl, let's go for a ride. How's she feel? Feels pretty good. Got her out on the open road. getting up to speed doesn't feel bad at all to be honest with you this truck actually runs surprisingly well it runs really good like you know we're using the engine for the mud truck which I'm gonna go through the engine we're gonna overhaul it but I mean it runs really good so what are we up to about 45 yep about 45 mile an hour right now um so far we're doing about 65. This thing is 
honestly towing really, really, really nice. I got no complaints so far. A little sluggish off the line, but uh, I mean, it's not doing bad at all. All right, yeah, here we go. So you got your trailer profile, your Texas Pride 30. Boom, tells me how long I've towed with this trailer, chose it, all that stuff. So honestly, for towing, I mean, this thing is just ideal. And all that good stuff there. We'll go back. Texas Pride 30, all of our stuff is good. And we'll go back to that. Let her eat. And we're off. One real nice thing, which is definitely not going to be in the $2,000 truck, is the camera system. I do will say this is super nice where you're towing. You can see everything behind you. We'll go that here, we'll go here. There's our front view, our rear view. Make sure your hitch is locked in. I mean, that's pretty awesome if you ask me. Another hitch view, just in case, make sure you got that girl latched. But this is definitely something that's not gonna be on the, uh, the $2,000 truck. All right, so we're doing about 60 mile an hour here. We're gonna do a little 60 to 70 test and we'll see how long it takes. All right. Ten seconds. About uh, twelve seconds from sixty right to seventy. Gotcha. We'll check. We'll count that. We'll do the timer on the on the uh, screen there and see what. But about twelve seconds, what we got. So that is a good to know though, because you know, like you got to have a passing. You know, sometimes you got to pass people. So it's good to know because clutch fans on now. Oh yeah. I got a little warm, but you know, every once in a while you got to get around somebody. Whatever. It's good to know what you can do. Definitely a good comparison. We'll get her up to 60. 60 miles an hour, same straightaway. Madam. 67, 68, 69, 70. Dang, dang. Oh yeah. Seven and a half seconds almost, for our passing. Almost half the time. <laughs> oh. And it didn't even feel like it was working. <laughs> It just did its thing, dude, not an issue. So seven and a half seconds. The other one was about 12. We'll do a timer on that one to see, but give or take around 12. So I didn't, you know, I really didn't think there'd be that big of a difference. I knew there'd be a difference, but man, like I just didn't see it as being that big of a difference. Yeah. And this isn't about, you know, where you're going. We know you're not drag racing with your trailers and stuff. But it's really good to know, you know, like you buy something, you want to know what it can do. And it's like, you got to go up a mountain or something, or you got to go up a huge hill, or you got a downhill that you got to do a lot of braking on. It will literally show you the difference between one of these newer trucks and a truck that's about 18 to 20 years old, which is still, in my opinion, a 2005 to 2007 truck. That's not an old, old truck, but you think about it, it's almost, you know, they're 20 years old now. Yeah, there's a so, lot of them running around on the road, for there's sure. There's a lot of them, man. We work on a lot of them at the shop. We work on them every day. So I'm not down on those at all. It's just showing you the comparison between what you get for this and what you get for that. And will it work for you or will it not? It just depends. So now let's go check out and see what these things will do on our zero to 60 and we'll do our braking test after. We'll do our zero to 60 and it's actually gonna give us a quarter mile too. So let me reset this rig here. And we're just gonna flat foot it, no spooling up. Come on, baby girl. Let's go. Ooh. Ooh, that's good. Nice firm shift. She gets up there in the RPMs now. What do you think, how does it feel? We're about to hit 60, 60 miles an hour. All right. Man, not bad, not a bad little rip. So, uh, took us 26 seconds to get to 60 miles an hour. And it was 23 seconds in the quarter. 
so, <laughs> so we didn't quite hit 60 at the quarter. <laughs> That's still though, we're towing, you know, 12, 13,000 pounds. For sure. It's not miserable. I could live with that. If I bought something for a couple grand, I mean, I could definitely live with that. I'm ready. All right, we're gonna go give this a whirl, see what this thing does on the zero to 60 now. GMC 2024, 6.6 .6 liter Duramax. And we'll go right into the braking test too. All right, same deal, flat footing it. Oh my God, dude. This thing's got some torque. This thing snatches. This dude. thing got some torque on her. Let's see if we hit 60 mile an hour in the quarter mile. Our zero to 60 is, dang, 16.8 seconds, zero to 60 and 21.9 seconds in the quarter. So loaded down, dude. Pretty big improvement. That's a huge improvement. Good. All right, so what we're gonna do is now we're gonna do a braking test. We're gonna do 45 mile an hour to zero. How long is it gonna take? I'm gonna start my timer right when I start hitting the brakes at 45. So we're at 45 now. All right. Oh, binders is working good. <laughs> 7.4 seconds from 45 to zero. Front tires were squealing just a little bit. Yeah. She was hanging on there. All right, let's check out the GMC. Good. All right, now we're gonna be doing our braking test. So we have it at 45 miles an hour. And where is our timer? I think 46, ready? Nobody around, we're good. All right, and... Five point four seconds so for two braking. Two seconds faster braking too, dude. That's insane. Like that's a lot in a situation where you gotta lock the brakes up. Two seconds is a lot. So pretty wild. So there you guys have it. There's our hundred thousand dollar versus two thousand dollar diesel truck challenge. I mean, air comparison, you could call it. I'm gonna go from my opinion on this. Here's my kind of uh, what I feel on this. If you are driving your truck every single day and you need that thing to work and you've got to go haul skid steers to jobs and you're using this thing, we're putting 100, 150 miles a day on it. I know, you know, 100 grand is a lot of money, but it's just the market we have now. Just like everything in this economy has gone up. This is probably gonna be your best bet. If you got your boat that you tow on the weekends and you need a truck to haul stuff like wood or stuff for your project you're working on, or even if you do work the truck every day, but you're like, hey man, I do like 10 miles a day. I haul a small trailer, lawn care business, something small, you know, that's maybe just a little bit smaller than what, you know, you would want like a skid steer or tractor or something like that. By all means, for two grand to five grand, something like this will get you down the road, no problem. Keep in mind, you are gonna have issues with a truck, you know, that's got high miles or that's a couple grand. I mean, luckily for this one, the tires were good, the brakes were good, everything was good. Cosmetically, she's a little rough, but this truck performed extremely well. And the main thing that we saw a big difference is was the performance difference between the newer truck's bone stock and the older truck's bone stock. Keep in mind, you have a DPF on this truck, you have DEF on this truck, you do not on this truck. It's a little bit more of a full send where, you know, generalized mechanic or somebody that has a little bit of mechanical knowledge should be able to work on this where this one if you don't have a scan tool or possibly even a dealership right now because a lot of the software is not even updated yet this might be your best bet so in my opinion you're ripping a truck around town you need something every now and then or something you're doing light duty work with this truck 100 percent you're traveling across country you're doing trips all the time you're hauling big loads tractors everyday skid steers big gooseneck this would be my go-to. So guys, there's my comparison video on the two. Justin, I'm gonna ask your opinion on them. So, cause you 
also have an opinion on this. I, so. I feel I feel kind of the same way. I feel like the general guy that's going to use his truck maybe to go to an event, haul a truck every once in a while, I think that's the way to go. Most guys, I think, are priced out of that truck. Yeah. You know, I think most guys can't afford that truck. Yeah. <laughs> so with that being said, performance, reliability, that truck's going to win hands down every day. A truck that you can use, like just like you said, that you can use on the weekends, that you can haul a trailer. Even you're starting out a business and you need something to haul a trailer to get your business going. That truck's going to work. You're going to have maintenance you're going to have to do on that truck. The AC doesn't work on that truck. You know, you, you're going to have things that you have to do to it as opposed to you go out and buy a brand new truck and that truck's just going to work. It's going to do and, what it's supposed to do. And that's what you have to think is, you know, like I said, I got into a position where I was able to buy the truck and that's because, you know, things that happened and I was like, I'm not dealing with being broke down five hours from home because the past few years, I mean, we've been towing all across Absolutely. the state I agree nonstop. 100%. So when you take this truck and also you have to look at this truck, this truck is going to make you money. So is this truck, but you got to see, are you pulling up to a job site and you want to be in that? and you're pulling up to a multi-million dollar job site with a $100,000 skid steer and a $20,000 trailer, and you pull up in that or you pull up in this, and it might look a little bit better for you as you know, owning a business or running a business. It just makes your company look a little bit better yeah. too. There's a lot of factors that go into it, but performance-wise, that is outperformed, no problem. Took care of the job we needed. This one, same deal. Obviously, it did everything better. Um, not just because it's a GM vehicle, but also because of the year and it's newer. So I, I think we showed that both trucks are capable. Yep. Uh, the comfort level, the ability. Well, you were, like I said, we're not going for comfort level. But or I'm saying, it's just you know, this, this you know? truck, this truck, if you were doing com comfort level, the ability to do the job, obviously this truck's winning. But yeah. both of these trucks will do the job that they're asked to do. So there is our two thousand dollar versus hundred thousand dollar truck com competition, guys. We hope you enjoyed it. We want to do more like this. If there's something you guys want to see, we definitely are open to ideas. I would love to get me a brand new Super Duty and maybe even a brand new Dodge, and we'll do a comparison on all brand new trucks. See what we like best, because we get that question asked so much in our shop, what truck would you buy? So this would be something very good, or what would you recommend? This is a very good idea, so somebody could have an idea of how much they want to spend on a truck. And there's tier levels all in between also. So keep that in mind. You don't have to spend that much and it's that little. There's a $20,000 option. There's a $40,000 option. There's a $60,000 option. But for this, we had this truck, so it was easy for us to do the video because I don't have any other trucks that are dualies that are $50,000 or $60,000. So we want to make it as comparable as we could. So guys, with that being said, we thank you so much for watching the Jay Cecil channel. We will see you next time.